check, check, one, two, check. Check, testing, one, two, check. I'm not. We're good? All right.
What's up? I'm good, bro. You good? How you feel? Oh, we are live. I think. Yes, sir. Um, or just sit down. Yeah, or just sit down. Yes, sir. No. Uh, Monica's going to be welcoming Miss Charles, who's going to come and teach and introduce some of the pastors and staff and things like that. And I'll run to the yep. Please welcome. Uh, I'll call your name for this time. Um, you are asking.
thought of everything. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Oh, that's so lovely. Thank you very much. I want to welcome you all to the faculty staff meeting, those of you in person and those of us, those of you joining us online on our uh, live streaming service. We welcome you back. Happy New Year. I say that every year. It never gets old. It is a new academic year, and so I'm very happy we're started. We're getting energized. Um, and just really looking forward to everything that we have laid out for, for uh, this year. Um, I want to first introduce Mr. Charles Wyatt, our Vice President for Communications and Marketing, and he gets the joy of introducing our new employees, so we want you to welcome them. There you go. You can welcome me, too. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Um, this list started back in August of last year, so if your name gets called a couple of times, uh, which means we love you twice if you got called last year. If I butcher your name, please yell and tell me, but when I call your name, will you stand up or wave your hand or something? Are we good with that? Okay. Uh, Brett Harker, head baseball coach. Brett, I know we called you last year if you're here. There you go. Arian Peterson, student activities coordinator. Sarah Hewlett, assistant coach, women's soccer. Maya Henderson, student recruitment coordinator. James Robinson, assistant director. Pamela Wash, Associate Provost for Online and Graduate Programs. Pam, I know we're, you're one of the ones we, yeah, we like you twice as much. Uh, Heather Harvey, Associate Professor. Megan Richmond, Assistant Professor. Robert Boyle, Lecturer. Anna Boddicker, Assistant Professor. Matthew Talbert, assist, uh, I'm sorry, associate professor. That's Malbert, uh, Matthew Talbert. Jeffrey Kimmel uh, II, assistant baseball coach. Uh, Abby Cheek, assistant softball coach. And home run champion for her professional softball league this summer, I understand. So there, yeah. Saw that, saw that yesterday. Uh, Luther Watkins, database administrator. Brett Kikorian, assistant coach, men's and women's, uh, I'm sorry, men's and women's golf. That's Brett Kikorian. Charles Putnam, security. John Cooley, security. Shana Robinette, admissions representative. Hugh Roach, director of IT. Bill, is that you? Are you, are you, are you Hugh? Is that Bill Roach? Okay, okay. I ne never heard him called Hugh. Uh, uh, Matthew Ferris, Coordinator of Media Relations, that's for Sports Information. Lindsey Dahl, Assistant Coach, Women's Wrestling. Tawana Scott, Leap Coordinator. Brian Green, Sergeant. Kelly Richardson, Director of Finance. Stephen Seckman, Accounting Business. Reagan Patterson, admissions representative. Greg Lott, manager of systems and networking. Taylor Miller, coordinator of social and digital marketing, I'm sorry, a coordinator of social and digital media for sports information. Kimberly Levitt, administrative assistant. Brandon Stockdale, user services technician and the help desk. Tyler Helms, Success Coach. Mackenzie Height, Director of Student Activities and Summer Conferences. Jacob Costner, Assistant Football Coach, Offensive Coordinator. Joseph Staub, Assistant Football Coach, Defensive Coordinator. Bryce Caputo, Assistant Equipment Manager. Nathan Garner, Assistant Football Coach, Offensive Line. Carlos Parker, PBI Academic Coordinator for the Real Men Lead Program. William Ross, uh, PBI Grant Director, Real Men Lead Program. Riley Swanson, Assistant Football Coach, Special Teams. Jericho Cotri, Assistant Football Coach, Wide Receivers. 
Rachel, I'm sorry, Rachel Ekman, success coach. Kathleen Bulk, head coach, field hockey. Jordan Todman, assistant football coach for running backs. Dennis Diaz, Jr., assistant men's basketball coach. Holden Parker, security. Colin Johnston, uh, head coach, men's wrestling. Kenneth Taylor, Jr., security. Corey Rendon, assistant advisement coordinator. Corey, did I get it right? Rendon, is that right? Uh, Kendall Collins, assistant men's lacrosse coach. Audrey Ozaki, Ozaki, did I get it right, Audrey, are you here? Uh, assistant athletic trainer. Aaron Jones, staff writer for the Department of Communications and Marketing. Demel Hawkins, resident life coordinator. Somebody likes, likes Demel back there. Rachel Hines, assistant professor. Ali Agashami, men's soccer coach. Twyler Gunning, assistant strength and conditioning coach. Tyler, did I get it right? I'm sorry, Tyler. Where, where are you, Tyler? Ky oh, Kyle, okay. Sorry about that. I told you if I butchered it to let me know. Uh, Catherine Davis, professor. Isaac Mavola, did I get that right? Isaac Mavola, assistant professor. Didn't have a chance to meet some of you, so I haven't got the pronunciations yet, but welcome. Welcome to campus. Uh, Anita Worthy, lab manager. Stephen Kyle, assistant professor. Brian Terlizzi, assistant professor. Melanie Turner, student advisement coordinator for the online in the evening program. And last but not least, Joey Stanky, social work faculty. Welcome to Limestone. Uh, welcome to being part of the family and the team here. If, if I left you out, if you've, if you've started since last August and somehow you just, we didn't get you on this list, can you throw your hand up and, and, and tell us? Okay, we got you all or either you're not here. Okay, well, welcome. Uh, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce our president. I'm sorry. Hey. Well, welcome. Thank you. Anybody, I'm sorry. Thank you, Reggie, for letting me know. Anybody else? Well, great. Well, again, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. It's my distinct honor to welcome our president, uh, Dr. Daryl Parker, who's going to give you a State of the University address. Dr. Parker, all yours. Can I have this? Good morning. It is the start of a new school year. That's always exciting for me. It's been exciting for me since I first showed up in the first grade and got lost on my first day of class. I came back the next day, though, and I've been coming back every day, every year. I'm excited to be starting the 59th grade. I've been doing this for a little while, and because of that, I don't often need notes but I did make some notes for myself this morning because there is so much happening in higher ed at Limestone and so much planned for our future that I know I'm going to leave a lot of exciting things out. Plus, we only have so much time, I believe, in short ceremonies. So I won't give you a day lecture. But let me start with some comments about the status of higher ed because I think it's important that everyone recognize the environment we work in, the, 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 the things that are moving and causing significant disruption in our, uh, in our industry. Most of you remember we've just been doing a pandemic for a couple of years. That has been extraordinarily disruptive. It's called loss of learning for an entire generation of students. We have students on this campus coming back for their third year who've never seen student life because we didn't run it the way we would in a non-pandemic world. And higher ed institutions around the country have enjoyed floods of one-time funds tied to the pandemic tied to specific uses, all sorts of rules and audits reflected, 
but it's been money that's washed through that has solved and covered a lot of challenges for the past couple of years. Those funds are uh, drying up, and if you look across higher ed, you can see the sectors that have really taken some hard hits, and the coming year and the next year are really the first time we'll get a full chance to evaluate what sort of, uh, what sort of uh, damage and change has been left in the wake. Uh, some of the things are, are apparent right now. We saw strong double digits declines in community colleges. That started well before the pandemic, but were deepened during it. The community colleges are responding. They're offering free tuition. That's different. It changes the way many people view the value of the uh, first couple of years of college. That's an interesting uh, challenge that's floating in the higher ed market, but it's a response to a real concern about affordability. If you look at the uh, public regionals, they also have seen and are seeing even into this year significant enrollment drops. I was talking to some administrators at some of the public regionals in the state and hearing about their uh, double-digit decline as they're looking at the fall semester. They're looking at uh, their moves to try to um, incentivize long-term faculty to leave, looking at uh, moves to open enrollment to try to do whatever they can to build any student body. Private schools, if you look at those that have, say, under 1,000 undergraduates, it's everyone's questioning, how will they survive? What will they do going forward? But as those things rock higher ed, they also create opportunities for us. They feed the notion that we have been looking at the environment and developing a plan for success. We've been developing plans to make sure that we move ahead and prosper and survive in spite of the difficult times. Now, with Reggie sitting on the front row, I will start by saying, and of course, we have to do prudent budget management this year. You know, but we, we, we're, gonna, we're gonna tip our hat to the recognition that we are going to do our decisions in a responsible manner. We're gonna manage our resources. But there are a lot of things in our plan that help keep us focused on what makes limestone Right. First, our plan for success starts with a commitment and belief in student success. If you look at the real reason you are in this business, why you're in this room, it is because at some point you recognize that an institution like Limestone can transform student lives and you want to be part of helping mold that generation. And that is what Limestone has been doing an excellent job of since 1845. It is what we do, and we are making investments in critical areas to make sure that we continue to do it well. One set of initiatives under our strategic plan talk about transforming expectations. Because all of our students don't come in with an understanding of what they can succeed and accomplished. All, often on campus, it is easy to get caught up in the challenges of the past, things that we used to do, and not recognize where we are in the higher ed landscape and that we are moving up in the higher ed landscape. But if you want to see how we're transforming expectations, walk into the Heinz Riggins building that we opened a year ago, and it is fundamentally different from the rest of campus. We have the historic buildings, we have our strong roots, but we're also building at a class A level. And as I've been talking to the students and hearing from students who are coming into the class, it is making a difference when they look at Limestone and what they believe this institution is able to do for their success. Most importantly, we are focused on the future. We are building the partnerships. We're looking ahead to the goals. We're raising the money. 
to help us move to where we need to be to continue to succeed. None of our initiatives show how things have changed as much as our decision to uh, commit to the health sciences. When you heard the uh, introduction of faculty today, many of them were in broadly defined health-related fields. Yes, that is an area that is going to be in demand for the students we serve. It's going to be in demand for the industries that hire them. When you look at Limestone's success rate, we had a third party that evaluated what happens to the graduates at Limestone. When they looked at those career outcomes, they found that 92% of the graduating class year before last found jobs in their industry, or they entered graduate school or enlisted in the military. 92% success is a tremendous level of achievement. And our faculty and staff deserve recognition because they worked with the students, they committed to the students. You made it happen. Thank you. Just expanding for a moment on health sciences, not to leave others out, but uh, since I made one recognition to it, I may as well take one idea a little deeper than trying to tag every, every success program on campus. This fall, we're admitting freshman nursing students for the first time. That's transformational. We have over 30 students coming in who want to be nurses. We know from experience elsewhere that they won't all be nurses, but they may well choose a health-related field. Maybe if they don't go into nursing, they go into uh, kinesiology. Maybe they go into health administration. Maybe they go into an education-related field. We are bringing these students in. We will help them discover their niche, their success, their own transformation. We're going to expand our partnerships into the community. We've got planned a rural health summit that we'll do during the fall semester to bring in the network of health professionals that are now connecting and recognizing Limestone as part of it. And in our advancement world, we will finish raising the money to renovate the former Eastwood Library into a health sciences building. I'll talk more about what we're doing in facilities later. But it is interesting to note that with those freshman nursing students, right now we are looking at um, this morning's number. It looks like we have 424 new and transfer students who've committed to the institution. That is a bigger number since I've been... The, I've seen since I've been here. Um, I've, I've, I haven't successfully dug into the past for on-campus enrollment and this breakdown of classes across the way. Uh, Andrew and, and I, in information uh, research, and I have done some discussions and discovered some of the oddities of how we've classified folks in the past. But I do know that in the past five years, that's a big number for us. Our retention is strong. We have worked to raise our retention rate at the same time that other institutions that surround us have seen theirs decline. That is a tremendous sign that we are connecting with our students. And in spite of all of the challenges we face, we've done a lot of things right. Our graduate enrollment is right now at the, uh, at the same level we saw last year because applications and such are still coming in because we have the potential to admit in, in additional terms. We will see record graduate enrollment this year. Online, we still have some challenges. Our online pipeline relied heavily on the community colleges and when they lose all their students and don't let us come to campus, it hurts recruitment. Uh, but we're back on campus now. They finally opened it up about March. And we are actually doing things to bring in more of those students and stabilize it. It does create some, some pressure because that's been an area that, that's been a challenge. But we will reclaim our position in that market as that market rebounds. Uh, we're also doing things to improve our ability to attract students in the future and help both in terms of affordability and access. And that's important. Earlier this month, we um, 
rolled out our page on the Common App. For the first time next year, students will be able to apply for Limestone through the Common App. That's a significant lowering of barrier to entry. Through the pandemic, the number of students who switched to the Common App as the way to apply increased dramatically. So we're going to be part of that. I did a visit to a private institution reviewing them for accreditation this summer. And when I met with a group of students and asked how they chose their schools, approximately a fourth of the one in this room said, oh, I'm a common app kid. I really didn't know about it till I checked the box, talked to admissions, found out, and discovered this was the school for me. We've been missing that market. No more. Affordability is really interesting in terms of how it's changed because we have seen an increase in the Pell Grant. That's significant. That helps more students afford college. Most importantly is the way it impacts, along with some other changes, the affordability of our online program. If you look at the sticker price, it might appear that our online program is expensive. If you look at the funds available to uh, support the typical South Carolina student that we're looking at, last year we made a significant change in the way South Carolina tuition grants are awarded to non-traditional students. In the past, that program being online meant that their funds from the state were prorated. But the South Carolina Tuition Grants Commission decided last year that we'll treat all students the same in terms of letting them have their state money, which means that the financial support for an online student jumped from uh, around $2,000 to 4500 So those students, our typical students in South Carolina, most are Pell eligible. Many that go straight through are eligible for life, even in the online environment. And in addition, now tuition grants at 4500 that means online education for a large number of South Carolina students is paid for. That just started, starts with the semester that starts next week, so we're still getting the message out. We couldn't start saying paid for too early because if they start in July, it wasn't true yet. But for starting in August, our message that we can carry to these community college students about access to the four-year degree has changed dramatically. As I look around and visit other schools and talk to people from other schools, we are ahead of so many of our peers, but there's still work to be done. One of the opportunities that we need to embrace this year is being part of a consortium of private schools that provides access and offers online courses. This is a real innovation in the space of higher ed, and schools that do not have online programs can manage their cost and low class sizes by letting the student where they are not able to offer a section take the course at Limestone. This has the potential to feed another pipeline into our online program. We've signed up, we wanna be part of it. We have some work to do because the structure of our courses has to meet the common standards that hundreds of other schools are doing so that the student finds easy access, finding things, getting into it. So we've got to get that work done, solve that problem this fall so that we can start having those students uh, by January at the latest. That's a significant part of moving us forward. As you can see, it's a striking time in higher ed, but we're doing things to, to make it move forward. And I wouldn't be complete as I talk about it, unless I also talked about the investments we're making in Limestone. I mentioned the Heinz Riggin Center, over 60,000 square feet of uh, Class A academic space. I mentioned that we're going to renovate health sciences. So far, we have 2.6 million in gifts, pledges, and federal funds to renovate health sciences and get science lab equipment to help boost us in that area. That's a significant down payment on what we need to do. In addition, we've been very concerned about how we get uh, upgrades of labs in other areas in the science. And Reggie's gonna have more detail in a minute, but part of that is 
the Heinz Riggins Annex. With prudent budget management, this is why I've got to talk about it because Reggie can't brag on himself this way. With prudent budget management, when we built Heinz and Riggins, we came in under budget. We had a plan that the feds had approved that we could reinvest some of that money in uh, some of our deferred maintenance. But administrations change in Washington, and they got a program director for this program that said, no, you can't do that. You have money, but it can only be billed at the Heinz Reagan Center. So we talked to the architect, we'll do an annex. We will extend the Heinz Reagan Center toward Hamrick Hall. We will have connectors that solve access to the upper floors of Carroll and Hamrick Hall. We will build our most needed, most expensive lab space in the instructional space of that extension. We'll also have space for a, a multi-purpose room that the band practice. We'll also have some space for, for some student life. Again, I think Reggie has pictures to show. Okay, so I, I won't say more about that, but in general, if you look at the money we've got in gifts and pledges, we have nine and a half million ready to spend on investing in our academic infrastructure at the front of campus. I'd like another million and a half right now, and. Uh, and we're working on, on getting that. But to be able to put an extra nine and a half million into the front academic quad, that's a long way ahead of where we were just a few short years ago. We're also looking at what we can do for the historic building and campus beautifications. Um, we're negotiating with a company that um, focuses on sustainability. The question that the business office is asking them is if we did a renovation of Curtis, and address windows, insulation, HVAC, could it save enough money to pay for itself? They seem to think so. We'll see when we get them to sharpen their pencils and come through, but there's the potential that we could do a major Curtis renovation that's budget neutral. That would be powerful. I mentioned that we got uh, some federal funds and the money for science labs and stuff. That was a congressionally designated spending line item in the federal budget last year. They used to call them earmarks. It's first one limestone's gotten. They say you don't get those two years in a row. But we went back with another ask this year because it doesn't hurt to ask. The proposal we put in this year looked at lake limestone, commonly known as the quarry but the board wants to call it Lake Limestone. So we looked at Lake Limestone. There has been a plan, a desire for years to put a top quality walking trail around Lake Limestone. When we were evaluating the plan a couple of years ago, it was at the same time as a campus security analysis, and they basically said, you shouldn't put a trail around it till you can put cameras and security and make sure you can respond to an incident on the backside. So we bundled updated estimates for the trail around the lake with the remaining phases of our campus security plan and submitted it to Senator Graham. He submitted it to the Senate Budget Committee and when the Senate budget came out earlier this month, limestone was once again line item in the budget. Now, federal money, it's not real until it goes through all their politics. But for many people, what our folks in Washington that help us say is, this is a good sign because the amount in Limestone's name is really so small that when they argue about the budget overall, they're unlikely to get to you as something to worry about. I'm okay with that. We'll go in under the radar. We'll pick up another six, seven hundred thousand. We are doing well in terms of bringing in support. The latest initiative to excite donor is tied to the student experience. We're going to bring football back on campus. Actually, it'll be the first time we're going to bring football to campus. We're going to bring softball back on campus. 
the reaction from parents and students has been tremendous. The uh, number of donors who are talking to us has increased. Don't have big checks yet. But one of the things I noticed looking back at our history, many of the people who donate to things that are tied to athletics don't donate to a library or a health center. And so we need to give them the opportunity to share their money with us as well. Investing in the student experience can help retention. It can help the experience for the non-athlete. We have ambitious plans to get these stands in, to get the softball build bit, field built. We're going to make sure that we have a proposal for indoor sports. We're looking at what it takes to uh, clean up locker rooms and Timken and fix the gym. So we have a first phase of expansion in both outdoor and indoor, along with a variety of other projects that people have come up with where the answer's been, we can move at the speed of money. If you give us enough money to build this new facility, we will build it. And if you give us not quite enough money, we'll hold it and steward it until we get to enough money. We're very good at that. So we have a lot of things moving in terms of investing in campus. And that means I need to tell you just a little bit about where we are in our advancement campaign. For those of you who have not been around for a lot while, when I arrived and talked to the board, my expectation was that a president's comprehensive campaign begins the day they're hired and ends the day they leave or are removed or are carried off campus. So I said, we will start our campaign now. And that first phase we called the drive to university. And we brought in money. Not as much as we'd like, but we brought in good money. Then we had a study going on to get professionals help us and set some goals. And we said, we'll go into a leadership phase. And the professional said, we've interviewed a lot of your donors. We think 20 million is an ambitious goal for Limestone. I said, okay, we'll do a leadership phase of 20 million. It's, well, we think that's an ambitious campaign goal, but okay. We talked about the timeline. They said you need to give it three to five years at a minimum. We're in about the third year, actually a little ahead of the third year. As I count comprehensive dollars, gifts, pledges, estate gifts, competitive federal funds, I'm not counting the COVID money. My campaign math shows that we're at 19,750,000, which means we are very close to moving from the leadership phase to the stretch phase. For the past two years, faculty and staff on campus have stretched to make sure that we take care of our students. We have stretched during the pandemic to make sure they still got us good experience. We have stretched to make sure that our retention rate has gone up, our graduation rate has moved, and that those students find jobs. And now it's time to ask those who give support to stretch, to fill a menu of additional projects that are coming. We have more to do, and we are going to challenge those who love Limestone to help us do it. That means building our endowment, that means more money for the academic programs and building, and it means an investment in the student experience. We've got a plan, we're taking steps to achieve a plan, and we will ask our donors to fund the plan. It's gonna be a great year, the students are coming, we are back, and as always, go Saints! I was looking for the clicker. I was going to be the glorified uh, slide advancer, but I see Charles is already on it. So please welcome to the stage, Mr. Reggie Browning.
Good morning, Limestone. I'm going to try that again. Good morning, Limestone. That's better. Dr. Parker came down the stairs. He was like, I went over. I, I went long. I said, oh, that's okay. You, you can take some of my time. But, but we, we're good on time. We're good on time. Before I get started this morning, if you will be so kind to do an activity with me. I know when we get in these meetings, it's, it goes long, and we're talking about a lot of good information, but sometimes we just need a little energy boost. So if, if you will, those of you that can stand, will you please stand with me? And we're so grateful that Fullerton this morning is so chilly for us because the next building over, we're waiting on parts for our HVAC. So aren't you glad you're in this building cold rather than that building hot? <laughs> I want you to think about one thing that is stressing you. And if you will, I know we think better on our feet. Close your eyes. That's so you can have that. You're not looking at me and saying, what is he going to talk about? Look in your mind, and I want you to think about one thing that is stressing you. We are at the beginning of this semester, the beginning of this school year, beginning of this fiscal year, and we got a million things to do, whether it's here at Limestone, whether it's at our home, our church, our kids, our parents, our families, whatever it may be. Something you ordered that has not been received. That's one of mine. A student still left to advise. Position still left to fill. A project that we did not get completed over the summer. How long is it going to take? Anything it can be. What is that one thing that is stressing you? Everybody got something? Okay, button it up, tuck it away. We're going to come back to it. Have a seat. Thank you for doing that with me. We will revisit that, okay? So this morning, well, let me. I'm Reggie Browning, Vice President of Finance Operations and Administration, and it is a pleasure to stand before you this year again. This morning, I will be talking about several things, giving you a brief update on several things. Um, as I was sitting down thinking about what I wanted to talk about, I was like, Dr. Beloga, she just gave me too much time. I don't have anything to talk about, but as I sit down and start thinking about things, it's amazing. That was, it was kind of cathartic. It's amazing the things that we get done here at Limestone, and we don't even realize it. So then I had to start cutting back. I only have 15 minutes. I can't talk about all of this. So I got it down to four distinct areas. One will be COVID, campus safety, finance, and then we will talk about the good stuff, facilities. Sound good? You guys are quiet this morning, and I know most of you, and I know you're not this quiet, so talk to us up here. The first one that I want to talk about is COVID, and this is going to be very brief and short. Thank God. The past two years when I stood up here, I think we spent about 15 to 20 minutes on COVID alone. Um, we have had COVID here on Limestone campus as the world has dealt with COVID. As the pandemic has, is turning into an endemic, we we're talking about it a lot less. That was, hey, that's one of my stresses that I'm glad to tuck away. So our COVID update is going to be short, quick, and sweet. Here at Limestone, we're going to continue to do what we've been doing for the past couple of years with COVID. We are going to, we've been successful here, guys, at Limestone. A lot of schools have called us as administration, called me and everybody that's working on COVID and the policies that we've done and the, and the procedures that we have put in place to deal with COVID. And Limestone is a leader in that for higher ed. We're going to continue to do what we've been doing. Our planning has worked well. We're going to continue to follow CDC recommendations. We will no longer do contact tracing this year per CDC recommendations. What we will do, we will continue to have us a limited space for isolation for males and females living on campus. And we're going to continue to recommend that our students, our faculty, our staff, anybody here on our campus, take care of themselves. Meaning, continue to wash your hands, 
I don't have to tell this group that, but it's a group here on campus that we do have to tell, wash your hands. Continue to wipe down and keep things clean in our classrooms, feel on our, in our athletic buildings, all across campus. Let's stay clean. And the number one, if you feel ill, it's okay. Take care of yourself, but take care of everyone else. Stay home, okay? There's so many symptoms for COVID, it's best to just be safe, right? So we don't keep spreading it. I think this is gonna be a stellar year on our campus. Nobody mentioned that, that M word, monkeypox, okay? <laughs> We're not gonna see that here, right? We're gonna declare that. But I think this is gonna be a stellar year. We have soared through this pandemic and I'm proud of what Limestone has done. So continue doing what you're doing. Give yourself a round of applause for making it through what we have made it through. Short and sweet. Next topic I wanna to talk about is campus safety. We generally give um, Chief Petty an uh, opportunity up on stage um, at the beginning of the year, but he told me this year he didn't really need one. He said, just mention a couple of things. They are busy, 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 busy in campus safety. First, help me in congratulating them. A lot of them aren't here because of course they're out patrolling. Help me in congratulating them and their success in becoming a split, sworn force, police force. Meaning, what that means is half of our campus safety staff will be real police, real sworn police. Give them a round of applause. They probably can see it online. They have been working on this over the past year. We have sent several officers to the police academy down in Columbia, including our chief who, was, who graduated last summer. We have six officers now that are sworn police officers here on Limestone's campus. That is a great feeling. Does that make you feel safe? Does me. And so we are proud of them. They will continue to run that initiative. And you'll see some things change with them as they get equip new equipment that they have to have now as police officers, um, change processes that they have to change, but it's all for the betterment of Limestone University. They are also making strides to, making strides to reinforce some of the things that they've been working on for a while. And so Chief wanted me to make sure that I let you guys know Limestone PD now is here and available 24 seven. I don't think a lot of you guys realize that although they are safety, campus safety, police officers, they do so much here for the university. How many of you guys realize during our after hours, after five o'clock, if, if no one can get someone in maintenance, they, they, they go to the residence halls and, and plunge to toilets. They go make sure that our students are safe to when, 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 when anything needs to get done in any of these buildings 24-7. And so I'm, I'm thankful for them, and I know that you are as well. Lastly, as far as campus safety, they are very busy with us moving sport, a lot of the sports back, but mainly football, moving it to campus for the first time. With that comes a lot of planning. Where are these people going to park? Where are we going to eat? Where are we going to do this? Where are we going to do that? Campus safety is very influential and has been a big help in making sure that we get everything passed and, and done that we need to get done to do that. And so I want to personally thank them for that. Lastly, with campus safety, I want you to know the first couple of weeks, they are going to be strictly enforcing our parking regulations and rules here at Limestone for several reasons. The first reason is it should just be done because we need to follow our rules and regulations, mainly students. Secondly, for training, as we are moving all these activities to campus, parking is a big deal now here on campus. And so we need to train our environment and our campus on how things should be done. So when we get all these people on campus, that's not the time to train, because it's too late. So the next couple of morning, the, the next week, you will see campus safety out. They will be ticketing. So make sure you're part in the right place. But make sure you tell your students as well, 
You don't want to waste your money, so don't get a ticket, okay? The next um, thing I want to talk about is finance. And I'm going to talk um, about this very briefly as well for one reason and one reason alone. We are still closing for last fiscal year. So while I don't have numbers to share with you as the fiscal year ends, we are we're closing. Our auditors are planning to come in in the next couple of weeks. And so we're busy, busy, busy on getting that done. So I don't have numbers to share with you. But what I did want to share with you was some goals and plans and initiatives that we have come up with per finance. So last week, we met with Credo um, on the strategic plan. The cabinet met with, with them. And one of my um, tasks that I was given was to fine tune some goals strategically that I want to meet financially within the next three years. And so I want to share those with you because you guys will help us do it. The first one will be our budget will be right sized to bench to the benchmarks to our enrollment and to cash flow. So you everyone here has some part whether it's large or small in our budgeting process here. We have to get our budget right sized and it's something that can't be done overnight. I've been talking about this for probably about 2 years and we're making stride after stride after stride to get there. Through all this transition all this new growth that we are having here at Limestone, we have to also make that an important factor as well when it comes to budgeting. So over the next three years, we're going to continue to work on that because benchmarks are important. What are the other schools doing? That's what I mean by that. The other schools our size doing. Enrollment is very important because the money's got to come in for it to go out. And number three, cash flow is important because for the accounting people in here, we know profit and loss is a lot different than cash flow. And so my goal is to move those more in line. Goal number two will be we will have an operating cash surplus of at least $5 million. That's something we've been working on for a while. We need to get that. We need to grow that. That will make all of us more comfortable. We need to have a funded capital budget. Three years ago, we didn't have a capital budget at all. So I implemented a capital budgeting system that we've been doing for three years. My next goal is to make that a funded capital budget. Makes it more comfortable, make sure that we get everything done that we need to get done. Number five, we will continue to attempt grant revenue, increasing the percentage of funding which offsets our operations. Guys, we have so many different departments here. In the, in the business office, we have people that are working on grants. We have become so successful over the past two years with gaining grants, and mainly federal grants. Let's give ourselves an applause for that. So over the next three years, I'm greedy, yeah. I'm going to push. I want more grants because it's free money and we need it and it's helping. So with that grant revenue, it's helping us do lots of things that you see going on across campus. A lot of times people will come up to me and say, I thought you said we were freezing the budget or we were not spending or we, were, we didn't have any money. That's because they see new facilities and new things erected and things happening on campus, a lot of that's grant money. So you don't get it until you spend it. Let's continue that across campus because I'm I, just like me, I know you guys like walking across campus and seeing all this new stuff and seeing our students happy with being able to be proud of the campus that they're walking across. And lastly, number five, we will save money in two ways, being more proactive Rather than reactive with capital planning and efficiency, we're getting better with that. We're going to continue to get better with that. And number two, retaining our human resource talent with right size personnel at competitive rates and pay. Very important. And I know that's important to you. And then lastly, we want to grow the endowment. And our goal, and this comes from our president, is to get to that 50 million mark. Okay? 
So those are our goals. That's what, that's what I set forth to do, and I know that you back me in that. The next thing I want to talk about is facilities. So before we start looking at the add-on to Heinz and Riggins, I want to talk about some things that we've been working on the past fiscal year that are spilling over into this new year. So from a, the cradle utilization study that we had done about three years ago, I think, um, we had lots of moves that had to be done. So yeah, it's been about three years. We had the president's office moving from here to there. But, um, fundraising and advancement moved from um, Macmillan to Curtis. Lots of moves happened initially with that utilization study. We are in our final stretch of that utilization study, which includes something that we are about 90% done with, ceramics lab moving from the bottom of Curtis to Granberry. So when you get a chance, don't go this week because we're still putting up walls, but over the next semester, walk through Granberry and see some of that work and labor that has gone into that to move art and ceramics to Granberry. It's gotten done. And then lastly, Counseling Center moving from Curtis to Dobson. So with that utilization study, the point of that was to put things in appropriate places where it's beneficial for our students. And we think we're doing that. Some other things that are recently happening that has spilled over from last year, anything dealing with technology in Heinz and Riggins, Oh my God, that's been my stress for the last year because it has taken pretty much a year to get stuff in. So over the summer, the meeting rooms and most of the classrooms in that building in the library, the stuff has come in. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you go through and see. It's really neat and it's, it's, it's limestone and it's high tech. Some things that just came in really last week, you will see a new technology kiosk on the bottom floor of Hines Riggins. I think IT is somewhere in the midst of getting that set up. Might already be set up, I'm not sure. But guys, this is limestone, and we have a kiosk in our student center. I'm excited. Um, just, just yesterday, I think, or two days ago, if you walk into Heinz Riggins fr from historic part of campus, we now have benches in our outdoor classroom. And it looks good. I can see students using it for much more than that, but hopefully some of the classes will utilize that as well. Um, we've completed pretty much our phase one of our security cam system, um, which hit about eight buildings here on campus and the Fort House that we were using off campus. In our next capital budget, we will start on phase two of that. So let's talk about this annex that Dr. Parker stole my glory in mentioning, but I'm okay with that. We had plans to use our leftover USDA funds to hit several different places here on campus, which would have been great. But plans change, people change, we have to adjust. And rather than lose all that, those millions of dollars, we decided to do what we could do with that money, which was build on to our new building. So this is what, um, if you go back, this is what Heinz Riggins looks like now. Beautiful building, right? I'll tell you, over this year, I have heard so many different things from our students, our faculty, our staff, about how they are enjoying this new building. If you go over there during lunchtime, you pretty much have about a 30 to 35 minute wait if you're trying to get a smoothie. Um, that's a good sign because that means they like them, okay? This building has done so many different things for this campus, but it's pulled it together to make this campus seem like a fluid campus. So what we're going to be doing with this annex, this add-on to this building, next slide. Um, this is what the floor, the, the blueprints of this building looks like now, um, with the parking on the side. We're going to be taking that parking and putting a building, erecting a building on that parking. Okay? Now, I already heard the groan. I heard a couple of groans. I heard you. The initial plans for this building is not going to take away the parking. The parking will be under the building. Okay? So 
These are initial plans, so none of this is set in stone until we get bids and budgets together, okay? But this is the plan, okay? So next slide. What this building will encompass, this is the first floor. So if you look at this building, what it will encompass is adding on some science labs that are much needed. So right now, it's about four science labs and some workspace that will be added on, on this first floor. This is the, we're just getting started with these plans. So these are high level. None of the, the, the users or the, the people with the expertise have looked at this. So this will change, okay? But I just wanted to show this to you. So the first floor will add some labs, which we, with all our health sciences and all of our sciences, we definitely need. Second floor. Second floor will add a multi-purpose room, which is gonna be about a third larger than the meeting space that we have on the first floor. Some band storage and a fitness gym workout area that's gonna overlook the quarry or what we now know as Lake Limestone. Can you, I just, when, as we were talking about this and, and dreaming about this, I just imagine myself on a cruise ship. You know how sometimes those workout rooms on the cruise ship overlook the water, right? Y'all been on cruises, right? We are gonna be able to do that here at Limestone. Isn't that something? So we are talking about parking underground, science lab, fitness area, multi-purpose room, mainly used for, primarily used for band, but can be used for other things as well. Band storage. Although our plans got changed from what we wanted to use, do with the money, hey, I'll take this. What about you? So, Dr. Parker mentioned some other things that we're doing facility-wise. Uh, so this is what our this is what our buildings look like now. So this is Hein Riggins to the left, Carol in the middle, and Hamrick on the right. This is what the new building will look like. So the annex, and in addition to that, it's going to be some outside um, ADA additions that will include an elevator that will also service Carol and the Hamrick building. So we're also knocking out some ADA things that we really need as well. So, like I said, do not hold this to me, to hold me to this because we're going to get this done, but we're just in initial planning phases. So um, while I have been working with the architect, we're now to the point where we're going to bring the architect in to work with the end users so they can tell us what we really need and make sure that, you know, everything is up to par as far as all the things that we're adding. So that's the annex. We are working on some other um, projects, um, some things with Curtis. I don't really have much to share on that at this point because of that's very in very beginning stages. Um, but as you can see, campus is becoming a campus that we can be proud of. We're not only just looking at the new buildings, we're looking at the old ones as well and want to, number one, make them comfortable for our students and our employees. But we also want to be proud of, this is a beautiful campus. Every time we, people come to our campus, they are in awe of the beauty and the mixture of our older buildings and our newer buildings and our athletics facilities. Limestone, we got a lot to be proud of. Okay, as I close, um, the next couple of people you will hear from are people from my staff that I wanted, want you to meet, number one, and I want you to hear about some of the things that they're working on with their staffs. Um, the next person will be from finance and business, Kelly Richardson. She's the director of finance. She's gonna share with you some initiatives that we have using some new software. It's gonna include you as well and talk about the LCA, Limestone Charter Association. And so I know a lot of you have heard about the Limestone Charter Association. This will introduce to you what we are doing with the Limestone Charter Association. And she works with that pretty much at some, every day. Um, so she's gonna give you a brief synopsis on where we are on that. IT, I would like to introduce you um, to Bill Roach, who's the director of IT. He's gonna talk about some projects that they've been working on and some things that's coming up. And then after a quick break, Patty Lankford, which I know all of you know, um, she's been here for a long time, but she's now in the role of director of HR. She's gonna talk about some things that we're working on with HR and some new systems that we're using and some processes that we're changing to make Limestone better. So as I close, I want you to stand again and, and 
stand again, please, if you can. That stressor that, that you thought about initially, the thing that's on your mind that's stressing you out, pull it back out. I should have brought the baseball coach up here because he would have been great. I want you to put that stress in your hand and throw it to the aisle. Throw it away. Throw that stress away. Because guess what? Now, I'm not telling you not to do what you're supposed to do, okay? But guess what's going to happen? It's going to get done anyway. It's not that we're not going to do what we set forth to do. I have no doubt, and I know that you have no doubt. It's going to get done. Guys, we got to learn how to be kind to ourselves, okay? Be kind to yourself. We can think about everything we got to do, but if we run ourselves in the ground, it's not going to get done. So be kind to yourself. As I close, I want to end with a quote from Joseph Cameron. Obstacles are things a person sees when he or she takes their eyes off their goal. Those things that are stressing us are going to get done. But don't let those obstacles run you. Let, let your goals run you. Thank you. So I want to personally apologize to Mr. Browning for only scheduling 15 minutes next year. I'll know to schedule 30. <laughs> uh, I just had to poke fun at I'm sorry. That was so exciting. Thank you. We're all very excited to hear updates and how we're growing as an institution and what opportunities lie ahead. I'm going to deviate from the schedule a little bit. It's 1030. Let's take a break. Uh, so I want you to come back. It's 1034 right now. If you can come back at 1045, the presenters following have said they ought, do have short snippets to present. So I think that gives us a chance to do our break right now. We'll see you in about 10 minutes.
Hello, everyone. If you could find your seats again, we'll get started. Before uh, we begin with the next presenter, I wanted to uh, uh, ask you to consider a volunteer opportunity. As many of you know, our new students are arriving this Friday. And um, we, you know, it, it, there's a lot of things that go on on that day. Obviously, moving is a big issue, getting things into Residence halls is a big issue. We're looking for opportunities for those of you who would be willing to volunteer. I'm going to let Dr. Tom Legrand just do a real quick pitch for some assistance on Friday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, so. Last year, we decided we were going to try to do a move-in day, and it was kind of a, a topsy-turvy, not real sure how to get that put together. And what we decided to do this year was narrow it down to freshman move-in, first-year student move-in. So on Friday at 8 o'clock, we will be at the porch, the patio of Curtis with T-shirts, with a sign-in, and with donuts and coffee for those of you who want to come by. You don't have to come by at 8, exactly. But we'll give you a shirt and we'll assign you to an area and you can go to that area. And what you're doing is looking for first year students to say, hey, I'm so and so, I'm professor whatever. And then you help them get their stuff into their dorm, just kind of a meet and greet and helping them get settled and making the parents feel a little bit better that somebody's there to say hello and to greet them. We have area churches helping with that. We also have several student organizations that are helping. So if you want to sign up, there is a, an email going out with a, a Google Doc where you can put your name down. If you don't put your name down, but you still want to help, anywhere between 8 and 4 p.m., if you'll give an hour, uh, we'll give you a T-shirt, we'll give you some food, and uh, we will get going on that. Just a great way to greet our students and to help them get started in their first year here at Limestone, getting to know some of y'all. So help us out. We'd love to have you. Thank you. Thank you. I, you will actually, those of you who might be there early will actually see me there. This is something I, I, I also did at my former institution. It's just the parents were just delighted to know that, that employees and faculty were out there to help. And so it's just a very nice, uh, nice gesture. Um, let's roll into the rest of our, our agenda for today. And I invite Kelly Richardson up to talk about something I am so excited about. So. Good morning and uh, welcome back for all of you who have been here and welcome to all new people. First, let me introduce myself. I'm Kelly Richardson, the Director of Finance, and um, I've been with the university since December. And a little bit about my background is while it is in accounting, I also have school finance background. And that relates to what I'm doing here at the university because I also am handling the finances for Limestone Charter Association. And for those of you that may not know much about the Charter Association, it is a school district, basically. It is a school district for charters. And currently, for this school year, we have three charter schools, and they come from all across the state. We have um, Coastal Leadership Academy, which is out of Myrtle Beach. That's a high school. And we have Horse Creek Academy, which is a K through 11 school. And we have um, Orangeburg High School for Health Professionals. And that's in Orangeburg, South Carolina. So those are our, new, our schools. We also have five brand new schools that will be starting for the 23-24. They're in their implementation phase this current year. So those will start accepting students in 23-24. And so we have a total of uh, right at 2,000 students, which for three schools, that's a lot of students. So my role is also with finances for the Charter Association. So just to talk about a few of the new things that we have here at Limestone University in regards to finance, 
is we will be starting a requisition system where all purchases will require a requisition and we have an approval process. We currently have purchasing limits um, that are in the handbook online through HALO. We're going to be updating those going forward with new limits and we will roll that out this fiscal year as well. And we will um, provide training as that comes on board with how to enter the requisitions and that would be something that is needed prior to making a purchase. And um, as we get more information, as we update those procedures, we will keep everyone updated during that process. The other that Dr. Beloga was talking about is um, our current system has not allowed us in the past to be able to see um, our budgets. If you're a budget manager, as many of you may be in the room, and you are in charge of managing accounts and budgets, what we're going to have is um, online budget so that you can view and look at your budgets. And it'll look very similar to this. It's going to be through HALO. Uh, you would enter through HALO and go into your budgets and you can drill down into your budgets. You can see each transaction. You can see your remaining budget. You can look to see if a check has been paid. You can see what has been paid and just the details of your budget. Right now, you've been getting, if you're a budget manager, you've been getting a report each month um, and that process is very delayed because we wait until we are finished with the month and then it takes a while to compile that data. And this will be live data as you're seeing it throughout the, um, through the online system. So that's coming um, sooner. That's gonna be rolling out within the next, hopefully a little bit. We're coordinating right now with all the VPs to get names of who sees which accounts and which budgets belong to which person so that we can get that set up. We've been working with IT on this um, program for the last month or so, and we're trying to finalize that now. But that is kind of what we have going on in the finance department. Thank you. I don't know about you, but that last announcement alone is enough to make my year, so I'm so grateful for the work that's been put into that. Um, let's invite Mr. Bill Roach up. Thank you. Good morning. Okay. Um, well, I'm Bill Roach. I'm relatively new here, and... Uh, We've been doing a lot of things this year and just wanted to hit on some of those. Some of them you've seen already and uh, probably some of them will be new to you. Uh, one of the things that we did earlier um, last year was um, activate uh, multi-factor authentication. Um, I'm an IT guy, so security is always something that we get to talk about and encourage everybody to do. Um, we did that for staff, faculty, and students for all their email access. Any of you who use our VPN are also on uh, multi-factor now. We've done that with vendors, and um, it really is for security reasons. It's not just to make your life hard. And one of the things we had to do was enable, in order to get our cyber insurance renewed and things, these were requirements that we have to meet. We also, uh, for those of you that have been here for a while, we use a product and a service called Know Before, and our goal is to re-implement that this year and that is for uh, email phishing and security training and some of those kind of things. Just to um, get people more aware, it's not punitive. I know uh, at my last school, some of the people looked at it that way. It really is just for training and education, get you more aware of things to look for and what to watch out for with emails. Um, that's probably the, the most prevalent way that people are gonna uh, get into the system and cause problems with malware or something like that for us. Um, Reggie had mentioned earlier uh, about our kiosk, so we wanted to uh, show you what that looks like. It's over in Heinz Riggins now. Um, it has uh, a few things on there now. There's a, uh, a donor list, there's uh, some access to menus and to uh, our campus directory. And there's probably more uses that we can have for that. If people have ideas, you know, we're, we're open to those and, and we'll be glad to see what we can do with that. Hopefully that'll be good. We're also working with marketing. They're gonna get some signage over there just so people know and can kind of see it when, it's, when they're coming in. Um, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention on that was uh, digital signage. We have that in HRC. Uh, we've just gotten 
through some of the kinks of working through um, what's on the digital signage. You know, we have those around campus. Some of those are um, different formats. So if, if you see things that are not uniform, you know, if there's a problem, let us know. But we're working towards that. We've got some units that need to be replaced on campus. We're still working on those. Um, also, um, just for your help, we're trying to ensure that all those are on all the time, that we're providing the, the messages that we need to do for campus. And if you see something that's not working, something that seems to be uh, a broken or, or turned off or whatever, please let us know in IT, contact the help desk, just so that um, we've got more eyes looking and making sure that all these things are going, because we don't have any remote way of knowing that they're not functional. Um, wanted to show you this is not super exciting, but it's exciting for the students that we have. Um, at the end of last semester in Fort, we had a ticket come in um, with the students talking about how poor the wireless signal was. So we sent our network team down there, they did some testing, and it was, it was really poor. It was a very justified uh, complaint that they had. So working with the business office, we uh, found some money. We were able to go in and replace the units in there. And this is a hospitality style unit which may or may not mean anything to you, but so there's an individual unit in each room that will uh, allow the students to have uh, a very good Wi-Fi signal that also gives them wired access in their rooms. And um, I think we'll see a big improvement this year for that. Um, you've probably heard a little bit about our uh, changes to Halo. That's something we've been working on this summer. Um, it started out with an issue at the bookstore. Uh, they were talking about students really having struggling to be able to order books and and to make sense of our system. So as we were looking at that, it gave us the opportunity to, to reorganize and do some things. So this will be the new homepage. Uh, our goal is to start rolling this out uh, at the end of this week. And uh, once we do that, that this will be your, your main layout. And the idea is to be able to funnel you into the areas that you need to see, uh, whether you're faculty, staff, students, or, or whomever. So this will be the, the new student homepage as they get in. And then you can see we've got ordering books right there. You probably can't see it because it's tiny. But um, it's, it's just going to make things a lot easier for them to get into, I believe. And uh, hopefully that'll uh, be a lot smoother for them. And then that is the new faculty page. You'll be able to, to get on there. And when Kelly was talking about that, you'll be able to go right in. There'll be some stuff that Patty will tell you about with human resources. You'll be able to access your budgeting and, and things right there. So just to make it hopefully a whole lot clearer for everybody. Let's see. And then um, just kind of the, the last few things I wanted to tell you about. We met, uh, Katie Jones and I met with several of the faculty at the end of last year. We didn't get to everybody because we missed one of the meetings, I think. Um, and one of the issues that was mentioned was the machines, the instructor machines in the classrooms. And while we didn't have the budget to replace everything, we were able to go in with the business office and get some funds. And we've done a uh, upgrade to all the machines in the classrooms. So you should notice a, a substantial improvement in uh, what you're able to do and your boot times and, and the machine will boot before class is over. So that should be a lot better. And let's see. We've been working on um, a lot of different contract negotiations this summer. Um, IT, obviously, we have a lot of services and things that come through our department. And so we have our internet circuits, we have telephone, we have um, you know, television and all the different things here. So we've been working with Spectrum this summer and we've just signed a, a new contract with them. So we're actually gonna double the bandwidth that's coming from them and we're still working on the hardware side of that to get all that implemented properly. One of the big things that's gonna be nice is our Spectrum U. And some of you from other schools have probably heard of that. It's uh, a network-based television system that's gonna be coming in. We're on a traditional coax-based system here now. And as this changes, uh, the channel lineups are gonna improve. And it's also gonna give students access when they're remote. And then as a benefit for staff and faculty, it's also gonna give you access to use that service at your home you know, on a personal basis. So that's a, a nice little benefit for everybody. Um, then as a reminder, Katie Jones is now in our department. Um, she's our instructional technology person and she takes care of Canvas. 
and then she also works with some of our classroom technology and some of those things. She's located at CTLI, and so give her a call if you need help, anything she can do to help you with, uh, you know, Canvas or any of the things there. Take a walk over there and look, see what all we have there. And, um, you know, if, if you've got some ideas of things you might want for training or that you might have ideas of how we could give better training or something, you know, it's just a, uh, it's a good resource. We just need to, to be able to use that. And then we have, uh, I think that pretty much covers it for us. Um, I know they mentioned uh, Greg Lott coming in. He's our manager of systems and networking. He's worked with a bunch of you already on some projects. We've had several chances this summer to work on some process improvements and some things to help some other areas. And if you have needs, you know, give us a call and we'll see if we can work with you and what we can come up with um, just to help you out. Thank you. I have to be fully transparent here. Uh, this summer, uh, Bill approached me about uh, outfitting a, a classroom with new technology in Hamrick, and I'm, I, we chose one. We went and looked at the site. We figured it out, and we settled on a room, and then I immediately called Buffy and said, Buffy, put me in that room so I can teach in that room, and I think I booted Fred Lux out. So, Fred, thank you for taking that very well. But uh, I, I do like that technology in the classroom and am grateful for that, uh, for the opportunity. Uh, well, we, we're past that. Look, at, we have a whole slate of people who are going to come up and introduce. I believe two of them are here today, Patty Langford and Renee Lamb. Please come up. I think I understand why all of our older employees, not of age, but have been here several years, are sitting in the back because they know when the break hits that they'll be first in line for the food. So I think that's why I see all the new employees up here at the front. Sorry we didn't give you that tidbit before you came in. So um, but just give everybody these three here and our new employees here that sit down at the front, give them a... Round of applause. <laughs> I grew up as a Baptist preacher's daughter, so I, we always said that the uh, back row Baptist always sit in the back of the church. So um, I want to introduce at least one of my employees here. We have a full staff now in the HR department, which I'm very excited about. Um, it has given us the opportunity to divide up the duties so we can um, serve our employees uh, much better. Renee Lamb took the payroll position, but we have restructured that into a human resource generalist position that specializes in our payroll and um, health benefits. Um, Donna Robertson um, is not here today. But she is also a human resource generalist, and she specializes in employee relations. Um, but if you need anything from any of us, all of us can answer any question that you have. So these are the um, titles that we have. Let's see, a little clicker here. This is our website. Um, once you click on that website, our emails are there for you to email if you have any questions are our direct lines. Um, so if you have a specific question about your payroll, or maybe a student payroll, um, you can email Renee directly, or you can, like I said, pick up the phone and call any of us. Our door is always open. I'm gonna give Renee just a chance to speak, introduce herself, um, how long she's been here, what she does, and that gives you a better opportunity of what you can uh, speak to her about. Uh, like Patty said, my name is Renee Lamb. I have actually been on campus for 17 years, and I have a secret. I love this meeting, and the reason that I love this meeting is I get to see everyone that I haven't seen since I made an office move. So 
I, that's my secret. But um, I get to help with benefits. I get to help with payroll. So if you do have a payroll question for work study, work employment yourself, um, you can come and ask me. Please don't ask me to add a zero to your um, salary. I can't do that. Um, and to the ones who have already done that, still not going to happen. Um, but please do come see us. Our doors are open. We are going to be rolling out a uh, quarterly kind of just information about your benefits, something you may not realize that you have access to. Uh, we do have also something called access perks that I don't know how much everybody knew because when I got to the office, I didn't know about it either. Um, so do give me a call, drop me an email. Um, and if I can help in any way, we're always here. <clears throat> I know Bill touched on this just a little bit. This is um, something new that we're adding to the HALO. I know for some of the um, employees that have been here a while, you used to go to the W Drive or the T Drive to get any additional forms. If you want to change your tax forms, your direct deposit, things like that. But we are um, doing away with the old drives. Some of those forms um, have not been updated. So we are moving everything to the HALO. If you go on sign on to your HALO with your normal sign-in, um, then you're gonna go up to the um, faculty staff resources, and this is where you'll see um, just additional links. Um, you know, a lot of people, I know I do, I may forget, oh, are we off that day? What is our holidays? How many days do we get for Christmas? Um, and then I have to go back through my email and find the holiday schedule. So we're posting things that at your fingertips, like the holiday schedule, um, the faculty staff handbook, the organizational chart um, for different departments. So um, you can find that there. Once you get to this screen, um, over to the left side on the gray area, if you click on human resources, then it's gonna take you to this page right here. On the right side, we're going to have those forms that we used to put on the W Drive or T Drive. And we'll be adding more to the forms um, as we go along. Uh, th any forms that I think that you will need to just, you know, click on, uh, it will also let you pre-fill those and they will come straight to us. So that would be your W-4, any tax forms. Um, Let's see, direct deposit. If you have any changes that you want to do to your TIAA retirement form, those will also be on there. Um, if you need some forms that you don't see on there that may be useful for us to put there, please let us know, and we can add those forms as well. Uh, let's see. I think that's all I had on the... I'm going to move back there. We are now trying to um, revamp our onboarding and on offboarding process. Um, I know we had a procedure instructional um, forms on how to fill a vacancy, and a lot of people would call, how do I do that? What are the steps? Um, the ones that we had was, you know, several pages of just paragraphs, and even when I looked at it, it was a lot to read. So we, we have tried to break those steps down in simple steps that uh, makes it a lot easier to read, um, user-friendly, um, tells you the forms that you need. We will also be sending um, the new procedure out to all the supervisors, um, and then if you have any questions about those forms, we'll, we can discuss that as well. Um, so the forms that have changed are, of course, the instructions on how to fill that vacancy, um, and that, go, that is step by step. Um, the request to fill the vacancy or add the position. Um, and we have added, once you um, get the request to fill the vacancy and then you have the offer, we used to have another form for that. We have combined those forms and put the offer on the bottom of the, um, the request to fill the vacancy. So we've cut down one form. We're trying to make it, you know, less paper as we can. And then you have the affirmative action form, which what I call vacancy two form. Um, the only thing we've changed about this is this is the form that we take down that position once it's um, been offered. Um, but we always like to reach out to the people that, you know, um, was either interviewed,
let them know that we have filled the position and, you know, wish, wish them the best. So we like to have, on the bottom, we have added the list of interviewees that you've interviewed and their emails. And so that helps us tremendously to then go from that form and send that email out to those people. So um, I think that's going to help make the um, transition easier. The new created forms, um, I don't really like to talk about offboarding because I hate to see people leave Limestone. But just to touch a little bit on that, we were having several people collect different things. You know, your keys, your limestone card, the credit card, you know, your phone, laptop, and all that kind of stuff. HR will now be collecting all the keys, the L cards, the credit cards, the parking pass. All that is going to be collected through us. Um, one of the main steps that's changing is you will... Um, receive the checklist for any employee that is leaving um, and they will get that completed. So they will actually make an appointment with IT to turn in like laptops, um, charging cords, cell phones to be sure that that equipment is, you know, properly turned in with no damage and things like that. So that kind of helps us, you know, get all of our equipment returned properly. Um, we're still working on some links on that process on onboarding and offboarding, but hopefully this is going to make it more streamlined across the university and a lot easier for the uh, supervisors. Um, I have one more thing that I'd like to um, kind of tell you we're starting. We're, we're starting a new Limestone University Department of Human Resources Facebook page. We will... Um, broaden out to a couple more um, social media pages, but right now we started with the Facebook page because Limestone uh, already has a lot of the um, web pages for athletics and things like that. So we wanted to join um, the crowd to do that. We will um, add some job postings on our Facebook page. Um, any kind of uh, benefit with insurance, anything that changed or a tidbit that might be great, any kind of perks. Um, Coupons, anything that we think that you might um, either enjoy reading um, about your benefits. Um, I know this is kind of small, but a lot of people don't know that we actually, you get Weight Watchers free through our insurance. So um, that's something that I didn't know till a couple months ago. So we will, um, we are digging deep into our benefits to try to get as much as we can um, for you to... Um, be able to enjoy a lot of, like I said, they have a lot out there that people don't know we have. So we're trying to get all of that together so you will um, have it at your fingertips. Um, the main thing that I want to um, let you know today is our door is always open. So no question is a crazy question. Just email us, pick up the phone, just let us know. We'll be glad to help you. Um, if we're in and out of the office that day and we may be a little... Um, um, delayed on the response, we will get back with you, I promise. And um, that's something, I mean, I've been here um, almost 10 years. Um, I love my job. I, I love interacting with the employees and the students. So, like I said, if you need me, you just let me know, and I will try my best to help you the, any way I can. So, um, we are heading out shortly to get the food ready. While um, I think you have a couple more speakers. So, we'll be ready to see you shortly. Thank you. Just as a reminder, we have updates to the faculty staff handbook and in accessing that, we do ask that you acknowledge that you have accessed it. There are some new uh, updated policies in there, and I was assured that it was supposed to go live today. I'm hoping that is the case. Uh, I haven't heard otherwise, so please, uh, again, log in to the faculty staff handbook that uh, you can access from the HALO so that you can look at those changes. Yes, between now, the, these are the people that are holding you back from lunch. No pressure, no pressure, but these are 
some of the most important topics that need to be talked about and we're required to talk about them every year. One of them we're required to do additional training in. And so even though you may be hearing about FERPA, you can never hear enough about FERPA, uh, we're also gonna be hearing about Title IX, but Title IX takes even more. Uh, so please listen to what the next two uh, speakers have to present today. Good morning. Welcome back and welcome to the new students from the Registrar's Office. I'm Penny Darwin. I'm the Registrar. We have a great staff in the Registrar's Office with many, many years of experience. So if you need anything from scheduling problems to classroom problems, please give us a call. We're there to help. I'm going to be talking about FERPA today. And when I was doing some of my research, I came across a study that LaSalle University had done. And a lot of the information they gave in their study says things a lot easier than I probably can. So I'm gonna be taking a lot of excerpts from their study uh, this morning. Personal data produ protection is paramount right now. You hear every day about data breaches. You hear about people whose identity has been stolen. We get um, requests for records from financial aid where some of our students have had identity theft. So it's not just the records office, the registrar's office that needs to pay attention to FERPA, it's for you guys as well, okay? So just remember that. Um, the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, or FERPA, uh, came into existence from the Department of Education November the 19th of 74. Um, you think back before that time, I'm sure there were breaches in security as well, but with the onset of the internet, and it amazes me that there are people out there that have nothing better to do than to try to get into my accounts. That blows my mind. But there are, and we need to be careful. We need to be conscious of who we're sending things to. Just because uh, you get an email from somebody, that doesn't mean that's that person on the other end of that email. Um, I know here recently, I've been sending a lot of phishing alerts to IT because for some reason I've been getting a lot from human resources um, about something. So be cognizant. Just remember that you don't, I can't say that word, I want to, but I can't. Uh, just remember that you need to know who's on the other end of that email. Um, no department of an educational institution that is, is exempt from compliance of FERPA. And there are um, areas, even in human resources or purchasing. You think about uh, some of the purchasing that we use our credit cards for. Um, that can be an issue with FERPA. Punishment for noncompliance can be the loss of eligibility from, to receive federal aid, and we do that. We do get Pell Grants, and we do get guaranteed student loans. So if we're not in compliance with FERPA or we're, we're, a suit is brought against us, we could financially lose those uh, monies coming into the school. Um, the term student, we think about it, and I know some of you have gotten calls from parents. I'm paying the bill. You need to tell me how they're doing in class. Some of these parents need to realize their students are adults now. And the term student, as defined by FERPA, is any individual, minor or adult, who attends an educational institution via any form of correspondence, whether it be by satellite, internet, in person, video conferencing, or just by paper. All of those are considered a student. Doesn't matter what platform they're receiving their education. Ensuring that the data is maintained is all of our responsibilities. Educational records contain a vast amount of information. If you think about some of the records we get, um, we get high school transcripts. We get other college transcripts. Financial aid gets tax forms from parents. 
athletics get shot records and physicals. That's a lot. I mean, you could pretty much create a person out of all the information we receive. So it's very important that we review these records and that we are doing what we need to do to keep them safe. Um, Keep going. Um, I do want to show you for the new folks. Oh. Ah. Um, I, you've heard that the halo is changing. It's being revamped. So what you're seeing now is the current halo. Uh, once Bill and those get the new halo up and running, I'll be sending out some um, Slides, I guess you could call them, to show you how to get to the communication authorization. Right now, it is under the faculty page, and it's called the communication authorization. This is a form that the student fills out once they're on campus, and they tell us who we can discuss their records with, whether it's mom, dad, a grandma, grandpa, uh, or it might be a legal guardian. If that person's name that calls you is not listed on this form, you're not at liberty to discuss that student's records, whether it be grades, attendance, um, how they're doing, or they come into class, all of that is considered confidential. So what you would do is under reports, click on communication authorization, type in that student's ID number, hit generate report, and then you'll get a PDF of a communication form. And there you'll see Wilma Flintstone, mother, Fred Flintstone, father, um, Betty Rubble, aunt. Um, but if Barney's not on there, then you can't talk about that student's records. Um, just a few final thoughts. Um, higher education institutions provide education for students who will ultimately become the leaders of the next generation. The protection of a student's personal information means he or she can pursue his education with confidence and comfort. Communication to a student's parents or guardian regarding the rights to the security of their respective educational record provides assurance their data will not fall into malicious hands and allows the student to concentrate on their studies rather than worrying about their, educa their education or identity being compromised. So the ultimate goal of these regulations is to ensure the privacy of every individual who has data contained within any institution's bounds. And if you think about it, we're not talking just about students. We're talking about us as employees, uh, as faculty, as coaches, um, FERPA is there for Patty and those in HR as well. So just remember to always check the communication authorization, and this can be filled out at any time. If the student forgets to do it when he first gets here and their mom calls and you say, well, you need to tell your student to go add you to the list, that can be done through the HALO at any time. But if you have any questions for me or you need anything from the registrar's office, please let me know. Good morning, everyone. I have the honor of being the last one between y'all and lunch, so I will try to keep this as brief as possible. But Title IX is a serious topic, so I want to give it the time that it is due. My name is Daniel Francis. I'm the Director of Community Values, and I serve as the Deputy Title IX Coordinator here at Limestone. In my role as Deputy Title IX Coordinator, I've been fortunate to have the opportunity to train a number of you since the start of this academic year. Um, over the last couple of weeks, and I look forward to working with the rest of you over the coming weeks as we get everyone in compliance with the yearly requirement. But what is Title IX? When it initially started back in 72, the initial focus was to create a policy that prevented discrimination based on sex in any federally funded activity or program. And initially that looked like creating a equal representation and funding for women's athletics um, in comparison with men's athletics and through K through 12 and higher education. But since 72, this policy has expanded to cover a number of different areas. 
So now Title IX focuses on preventing discrimination based on a number of characteristics, not just sex, including race, political affiliation, gender, identity, expression, anything that you can see in this list, these are all protected under Title IX. Any type of discrimination, harassment based on a protected status in this list could be a violation of our Title IX policy. When we think about types of discrimination, um, any type of preventative action, any type of action where it's trying to exclude someone from an activity, removing from a team, not admitting a student based on a particular characteristic, um, or any activity that falls under our sex-based discrimination, which includes sexual assault, sexual harassment, dating violence, domestic violence, stalking, and sexual ex exploitation. And I go into a lot more depth on those in the mandatory training that we do. So I won't go into too much detail here, but I wanna make sure everyone in the room and everyone watching online has the information you need for these first couple of weeks until you attend the, the mandatory training so that if a student comes to you, a fellow coworker comes to you with something where it could fall here, that you know who to bring that information to. So if you're ever in a conversation with a student and they let you know about something that may have happened to them um, here on campus, off campus between another student or even with a fellow faculty staff member to know that everyone in this room and that anyone who is employed by Limestone University, anyone who receives a paycheck from Limestone is considered a mandatory reporter with a few exceptions. If a student brings you something that could be a Title IX violation, you are required to bring that to the Title IX coordinators. And one thing that we say in our trainings is that is not the time to stress about an organizational chart taking it to your supervisor first, your head coach, your VP, bring it directly to the Title IX office so we can address that case and process it through the proper channels in Title IX. We also tell our faculty staff to not take the burden on yourself to determine is this Title IX or not. It is a long policy. It is 67 pages. It's on our website if you ever have a hard time sleeping at night. You're welcome to read it. It is very legal. It is a federal regulation. It is lengthy. but there's a lot to it, and we don't expect y'all to be experts in Title IX if someone comes to you with a situation. If you have an inkling, if you have a concern that it could be tied to what we're talking about this morning, please go ahead and bring it to our attention. Because if it's not Title IX, let us make that um, determination and then we can move forward whether it's student conduct or related to human resources policies. But please bring those to our attention as soon as you're aware. That is everyone that is employed by Limestone with the exception of our chaplain, our counseling services staff, and our health services staff. Those three areas are confidential resources and a student or an employee can disclose to them something that has happened to them without that person being required to report it directly to Title IX. They can help those students or those individuals bring it to our attention, but only with that individual's explicit permission. We will have further training throughout the year, and starting this semester um, for our faculty, I'm able to train y'all as, um, as part of your college. So we've already got um, several of the colleges scheduled and ready to go. I'll be training the College of Business this afternoon, which I look forward to, and others are set up for later in the semester. For our staff, keep an eye out for trainings that are gonna be scheduled throughout September. The goal this year is to have everyone in compliance and trained that is currently employed by fall break. That is my goal to get our athletic teams, our students, our staff, everyone at Limestone trained and in compliance by fall break so we know everyone's gotten the information, everyone's prepared for a situation, and you will not do this again until the 23-24 academic year. So please keep an eye out for training opportunities. We do have our website if you ever are curious about what's in the policy, details, what are some things to look out for, limestone.edu slash know your rights. You can also get to it through the main website. It's at the very bottom of the page in our resources. It's know your rights. You will see my contact information there, like it is at the end of this PowerPoint, and you'll be able to see the full policy in its PDF form. And finally, we are looking for members of our team. Um, our Title IX team has shrunk due to people leaving and moving on to other opportunities. So I welcome anyone in this room and anyone that you know that may be interested to reach out to me to look into being a Title IX advisor. 
serving as an, an advocate for a complainant or a respondent, um, someone involved in the case, or as an investigator working as a pair to investigate the case, meet with the parties involved, witnesses, gathering evidence, and reporting that to our decision-making panel of faculty and staff members determining that responsibility for the case. We are looking for advisors and investigators. It is open to any faculty staff. I encourage you to apply for that. More information will come out soon, but please do. If you have an inkling this is something you'd like to do as a volunteer opportunity, it is open to everyone. And then finally, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to help you any way I can. My door is open. You can reach out to me, or you can email our Title IX email address that goes to both coordinators, and that is Title IX underscore, title underscore nine at limestone.edu. We are here to help y'all. Like I said, don't take the burden on yourself. Please bring it to our attention. We are here to help y'all, and thank you again for your time this morning. I hope y'all have a great rest of your day and a great lunch. Just to add in, those of you who are faculty who would like to volunteer as advisor or coordinator, that would be a component of service that, that meets a service, uh, service part of your contract. So please consider that uh, as, uh, and you know who to contact. Very quickly, I'm not going to get everybody, but I want to thank some key people. I have to thank Donna Cody. She does this every year, gets the ball rolling of getting uh, many things organized this week. And she has to learn to roll with the punches because it's trying, you know, trying to get everybody together, but she knows how to do it and she does it well. So I thank her for, for her assistance today. Chip Hill in the back, he's always got great attitude, always uh, helping out. Mason in front here, he's always a smiling, friendly face, and I know we've got somebody up in the loft, and I cannot t tell who that is, but I'm sorry, is it Billy? Is it, I can't, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's like light directly on me, I'm sorry, but thank you for everyone who contributed to putting this day together. Charles put together the slides. Um, again, I know I'm probably leaving somebody out, and if I did, forgive me, but thank you. Um, so let's go get some lunch. Have a great year.